Hello and welcome to this FMSP core prerequisites video. These videos are designed to help you get ahead with independent study of the A2 core, ready to develop the skills in A2 further pure modules. This is what you already need to know to get the most out of this video. Make sure you're really confident with all of this material before continuing. It's best to do the consolidation work as you go along, rather than watching all the videos and then trying to do all the consolidation work. You'll need all of these things. If you haven't got them ready, then pause the recording now and go and get everything together. And make sure you've set aside enough time to do the questions, as well as watch the video. There's just one new topic in this video. It's completely new and we'll develop it from scratch. The first question is why might we want to use a substitution to integrate? Here's an example to show. We could do this integral just by multiplying everything out, but that will be quite time consuming. There's a much quicker way. We're going to replace x squared plus 1 with a new variable u. But that means that we need to replace everything else in the integral in terms of u, and that includes the dx. We'll deal with that first, because that's the most complicated bit of this method. How does this work? Well, the first thing we need to do is to differentiate our expression for u. So du by dx is 2x. Now, if you go back to when you first met differentiation, you'll remember that du by dx was the limit of uh, chords as the length of the chord got smaller and smaller. And those chords were a small increase in u, delta u, and a s divided by a small increase in x, delta x. Now because this is an actual fraction, we can deal with it as an actual fraction, and so the limit as delta x tends towards 0 of delta u divided by delta x equals 2x. That means that the limit of delta u is equal to 2x times the limit of delta x. And that basically means the integral d with respect to u is equal to 2x times the integral with respect to x. There's a certain amount of hand-waving here, as always when we work with limits at A-level. Dealing with such things will take a whole lecture course at university, and so you've got that to look forward to, to see exactly what we're doing here. Now we need to put that into the method and some basic substitution that you're already comfortable with. Here's our original integral. The x squared plus 1 we said was u, and that's to the power of 5. 2x dx we said was in equivalent to integrating with respect to u, and don't forget the integral sign. Now this is a really in easy integral to do, it's just 1 sixth u to the 6 plus constant, and now we need to put that back in terms of x, so 1 sixth and u is equal to x squared plus 1, all to the power 6, plus constant. As this is our first example, let's check that it actually works by differentiating that and making sure we get back to where we started. So here's our expression y equals 1 sixth x squared plus 1 to the 6, plus a constant. And I'm going to differentiate that using the chain rule. So that's one sixth thing to the six, so that comes out to be thing to the five, so x squared plus one to the power five, and then differentiate the thing in the bracket gives me two x, and of course differentiating c is nothing, so that's two x x squared plus one to the five, which was what we started with. So here's a summary of the method. The process is based on the chain rule, where we already treat du by dx as if it were a fraction, which it isn't. However, the notation is there for a reason, and often we can pretend that it's a fraction. So here are the four steps. 
First of all, find the relationship be between du and dx by differentiating u. Then rewrite the function and dx in terms of u and du. Then do the integration in terms of u and then substitute back in for x. If you take care and are really systematic and write down all the detail, you'll be much less likely to make mistakes. We're going to do a number of examples now so you get a feel for how this works in practice. So, here's my integral and I'm told to use the substitution u equals x cubed minus 1. So the first step is to differentiate that and find the relationship between du and dx. So du by dx is 3x squared and that means that we can replace 3x squared dx with du. So our integral 3x squared x cubed minus 1 dx is, well, the x cubed minus 1 is u and the 3x squared dx is du. Do that integral with respect to u, that's a half u squared plus constant and then substitute back in a half u was equal to x cubed minus 1 squared plus constant. So much quicker than multiplying out. OK, here's another one and this would be much harder to do without this method. So u is 5x plus 1 so du by dx is 5 and that means that du can replace 5 dx. So our integral 5 over 5x plus 1 all cubed is, well, the 5x plus 1 is u, so that's u cubed at the bottom there. And then 5dx is du. So instead of 5 above there, we've just got 1. So that's u to the minus 3, and we integrate that, and we get minus a half u to the minus a half, plus constant. And that's minus a half 5x plus 1. Sorry, 5x plus 1 to the minus 2. And then it's a good idea to write it back in a similar form to how we started. So we'll write that as minus 1 over 2 5x plus 1 squared plus constant. Here's another example. Suppose we want to find this integral here. We're going to use the substitution x squared minus 3. We go through all the steps. du by dx is 2x, so du is 2x dx. What appears in the integral is x dx, not 2x dx. So we've got du equals 2x dx, and that means that a half du is x dx. So, integral of x, x squared minus 3 to the 4 dx is the x squared minus 3 is u to the power 4 and then the x dx is a half du. Doing that integral gives us one tenth u to the 5 plus constant and substituting back in gives us one tenth x squared minus 3 to the power 5 plus constant. OK, sometimes the process of writing the function in terms of u is not quite as simple. Um, 
Here we've got u equals 2x plus 1. So du by dx is 2. And that means that uh, du is going to replace 2 dx. But we're also we've got an x in here, which isn't going to disappear with the dx this time. So I need to write that in terms of u. So from um, u equals 2x plus 1, we get that x is u minus 1 over 2. So our integral is now, well, the 2x plus 1 is u, so that's u to the 5. And then we've got um, the 2 and the dx are going to become the du. And that leaves us with this x here, which is a half u minus 1. So we do have to do a little bit of multiplying out here, but you'll see that the to the power 5 has moved from being a two-term bracket to a single term, and that means that the multiplying out is miles quicker than it would have been otherwise. I'll take that half out the front, and I've then just got u to the 6 minus u to the 5 du. Integrating that gives me a half one seventh u to the seven minus one sixth u to the six plus constant and that's a half well um one seventh two x plus one to the seven minus one sixth two x plus one to the 6, I can take out uh, the half and I can take out 2x plus 1 to the 6, leaving me with 1 seventh 2x plus 1 minus 1 sixth. And um, if I take out those fractions, that gives me 1 to the 84th. And inside the bracket, um, I need to multiply the first term by 12, so that's 12x plus 6, and the second term by 7 minus 1, so that comes out to be 12x minus 1. OK, how do we deal with definite integrals? Well, we could substitute back in for u and then continue to deal with the limits in the usual way. However, if we change the limits to be in terms of u as well, then we don't need to bother with that fourth step of going back into x. We can just continue to work entirely in terms of u. So let's see how it works. We've got u equals x plus 1. And that means that du by dx is 1. And so we just replace dx with du. If x is 0, that's the bottom limit, then u is x plus 1, which is 1. If x is 3, which is the top limit, then u is 4. So now we're going to substitute everything. So the limit is going to be u equals 1 to u equals 4. And then um, x is u minus 1. And on the bottom there, I've got the square root of u, so u to the power of half du. Now you'll see that I've put u equals 1 and u equals 4 as the limits. Putting u equals on this line just highlights that you've remembered to change the limits. Sorry, I put a therefore there. I was going to write out the original integral again, and I didn't. So we'll put i equals there instead. OK. 
now that I've noted that I've changed my limits, I don't need to put the u equals in every time. Um, I'm going to split this fraction up. That's u over u to the half, which is u to the half, minus 1 over u to the half, which is u to the minus a half. Now I can do that integral. That's 2 thirds u to the 3 over 2 minus 2 u to the half from 1 to 4. And that's 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 over 2 is 8 minus um, 2 times root 4. That's 2 times 2, which is 4 take away, if u is 1, then those powers are both 1, so that's 2 thirds take away 2. And that comes out to be 14 thirds minus 2, which is 8 thirds. Okay, so far, all our substitutions have been in the form u equals a function of x. But sometimes it's easier to say, well, x is a function of u, or often some other letter, um, sometimes t, and um, quite often, if we're doing a trig function, theta. So um, with this integral here, 1 over root 1 minus x squared, it so happens that if we use x equals sine theta as the substitution, then it just falls out very simply. Let's have a look and see how this works. So um, x is sine theta. Um, theta is therefore arc sine of x, um, which means that theta must be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Our expression uh, becomes 1 minus sine squared theta, all square rooted. Uh, and then we need to deal with um, the dx. Well, we're going to do dx by d theta instead of d theta by dx. dx by d theta is cos theta. And so dx um, can be replaced by cos theta d theta. So our expression is now 1 over root 1 minus sine squared theta. times cos theta d theta. Now, 1 minus sine squared is cos squared, and we square root it and we get cos. So I end up with 1 over cos theta times cos theta d theta. And that's just integral of 1 d theta, which is theta plus constant. Now, suppose this integral had limits um, 0 and 1. So um, if x equals 0, then sine theta is 0, which means that theta is 0. And if x is 1, then sine theta is 1 and therefore theta is pi over 2. So our limits are now theta equals 0, so theta equals pi over 2. And I'm doing the integral of 1 d theta. So that's theta from 0 to 1, sorry, to pi over 2. And that's just pi over 2. OK, a couple more examples. Using the substitution x equals 3 sine theta. So dx by d theta is 3 cos theta. So I'm going to replace dx with 3 cos theta d theta. I've got limits, so if x is 0, then 3 sine theta is 0, which means that theta is 0. And if x is 3, then 3 sine 
theta is 3 and as before theta is pi over 2. OK, here's our integral 0 to 3, 1 over root 9 minus x squared dx. I'm going to do all my substitutions. So instead of x equals 0, I've got theta equals 0 and theta equals pi over 2. 1 over 9 minus x squared is going to be 9 squared, sorry, 9 sine squared theta and square root all of that and then it's not just dx it's times 3 cos theta d theta okay let's tidy that up a bit don't need the thetas on my limits anymore I know what I'm doing now um, I've got 3 cos theta on the top of my fraction and underneath 9 minus 9 sine squared is 9 cos squared and square root that gives me 3 cos theta d theta so that's just the integral of 1 d theta like I had before and integrating that gives me theta from naught to pi over 2 and I get an answer of pi over 2, like I did on the previous example. You'll have noticed that when we do these substitutions, it makes a huge difference to the complexity and often falls out to be something incredibly simple. OK, here's our last example. We're going to use a different um, substitution. We're going to use x equals tan theta this time. So if x equals tan theta, then dx by d theta, which you may remember or you may need to look up in your formula book, is sec squared theta. And that means that I'm going to replace dx with sec squared theta d theta. Don't panic, it's all going to come out OK. Looking at the limits, if x is 0, then tan theta is 0 and theta is 0. And, sorry, theta is 0. And if x is 1, then tan theta is 1, and that means that theta is pi over 4. OK. Now we can get, get going. Integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x squared squared dx. That's the integral from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 4 of 1 over, well, 1 plus tan squared squared. And dx I'm going to replace with sec squared theta d theta. OK, integral from 0 to pi over 4. Sec squared theta on the top. Now, do you remember your trig identities? 1 plus tan squared theta is sec squared theta. And then I'm squaring it, so I've got sec to the 4 theta. d theta. So that's integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 1 over sec squared. And that is the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cos squared theta d theta. Right, we can do that. It's not completely straightforward and we'll need to use uh, a trig identity to continue. So having got to this point, um, remember those trig identities cos 2 theta was equal to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta and that's the same as 2 cos squared theta minus 1. 
And that means that cos squared theta is a half cos 2 theta plus 1. So we're combining two integration methods into one single question. A half of the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cos 2 theta plus 1. And finally we've got something manageable. Integral of cos 2 theta is a half sine 2 theta. Integral of 1 is theta from 0 to pi over 4. That's a half of um, sine of 2 lots of pi over 4. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. So a half of that plus pi over 4. Minus, oh, well, sine of 0 is 0. And if theta is 0, that's 0. So just 0 comes out to be 1 quarter plus pi over 8. Well, I hope that's enough examples for you to have a go. Um, at this stage, don't panic about what you need to substitute. The substitutions will all be given to you. So here's one for you to try. So pause the video now and have a go at it before listening to the solution. OK, if you've had a go at this, let's check your solution. We've got u equals 2x minus 1. So uh, we're going to need to substitute um, for x um, rather than just 2x minus 1. So we need to know that x is a half of u plus 1. We need that du by dx is 2. So we're going to replace 2dx with du. Um, and in fact, we haven't got that. We've got just dx, so we actually need a half du equals dx. And we've got limits, so x equals 1 um, means that u, 2x minus 1, must be equal to 1. And x equals 2 means that u is 3. Now I can put it all together. Integral from 1 to 2 of 2x minus 1 dx is integral from u equals 1 to u equals 3 a half u plus 1 on the top and u on the bottom times a half du let's take the half times a half at the front as a quarter from 1 to 3 of u plus 1 over u. That's a quarter of, splitting that up, u over u is 1 plus 1 over u. And doing that integral, integral of 1 is u, integral of 1 over u is natural log of u. And that's a quarter 3 plus log 3 minus 1 plus log 1. Log 1, of course, is 0, so that's a quarter into 2 plus log 3. So a quarter of 2 is a half plus a quarter log 3, and that's option A. Do note, all of this stuff up here, um, don't skimp on that. Write all of those bits out very systematically before you start. It really helps to make sure you get it right. OK, one more for you to have a go at. Again, pause the video and try this for yourself. OK, if you've tried this for yourself, then we're ready to go through this. I've got the substitution u equals log x. And that means that du by dx is 1 over x. So you can see that I've got the 1 over x dx there. So I'm not going to need to know x in terms of u. But I've got limits, so I need to deal with those. x equals 2 implies that u is log 2 
x equals 3 implies that u is log 3. Oh, I've missed a bit here, haven't I? du by dx is 1 over x, so du is 1 over x dx. I drew it on the diagram but didn't write it down. OK, so integral from 2 to 3, 1 over x log x dx is integral from u equals log 3, sorry, log 2 to u equals log 3 of, well, log x is u, so that's 1 over u, and 1 over x dx is du, so 1 over u du. Integral of 1 over u is log u, from log 2 to log 3, so that's log of log 3 minus log of log 2 and that's the same as log of log 3 over log 2 and that was a okay now the thing that might be worrying you is how do you know when to use a substitution well for core 4 you will always be given the substitution to use so you know that's the correct method for FP units, you're expected to find your own substitution. But don't worry about that. Your FP teacher will work with you on this. That's how they're going to take you forward with this method. At this stage, in preparation for that, you just need to be confident in following the method when you are given a substitution. And of course, when you come back to do some final Core 4 practice before your exam and you've done all the FP2 or 3 integration, the Core 4 work is going to seem so easy. OK, don't skimp on this consolidation. You've got to do it sometime and now is the best time. You need to be really confident with this topic at Core 4 level for when your FP teacher is ready to develop it. I hope you found this video useful. The next one completes the set of integration techniques that you need with integration by parts and parametric integration. Goodbye.